Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox. Now I'm gonna keep this intro pretty short because they are installing hardwood floors in the apartment underneath me and it is so, so, so loud. You guys already know what we're doing in today's video, a really fun Ikea hacks, which we'll get to in just a minute here, but I do have an extremely exciting announcement, and that is that my heritage collection of brand new apparel is live over on LoneFox.com. I am so excited about this. I've been working on this project for probably about four months now, and I was able to partner up with an amazing illustrator who brought my vision to life and created me this really amazing kind of vintage, heritage-inspired Lone Fox logo. I've only released one collection of merch, which was actually a year ago, basically today. That was when I released my first collection and I was like, I want to do another one. I want it to have kind of an ode to vintage. I kind of wanted it to have an ode to vintage. I kind of wanted it to have like an ode to vintage. The graphic is kind of a vintage inspired frame, which we all know and love. It has a banner at the bottom that says Lone Fox. There is a fox inside with some grass. And then I have some really unique kind of sewing needles popping off the side. So I wanted to kind of incorporate a bit of crafting elements with just a bit of like traditional elements as well and merge them into this incredible logo, which is now available as part of the heritage collection. This is the first piece here. It is a really soft, comfortable sweatshirt. You can get it oversized if you want to. I always wear mine typically pretty oversized. Um, it is so cute. Let me share it with you guys. Kind of looks like this. And it's like a sandy ivory color with a dark brown print on it. And the thing I love about all the prints is that it was actually printed with a water solvent dye, which basically means that the print is flush on the fabric. Like there's no crispiness. There's no crunchiness like of a traditional screen print. There's no kind of like plasticky feel. It literally feels like it was melted into to the fabric, which I love. So this is the hoodie. And there are also two t-shirts featuring the same exact logo on them. There is this indigo blue color, and there's also the olive green color, which you guys saw me wear in my last video. I love absolutely both of them. I think I prefer the olive green just because I love moody colors like this. It has a black print on the front, again, with that water dye, which is just amazing because it just, it just feels like it's part of the shirt, like it was knitted into the actual fabric. And then we have the indigo blue color, which kind of appears a bit brighter on screen. It's more so of like a muted kind of cornflower blue tone. And I did a tone on tone print with this one with a navy. I thought that looked really nice on there. So here is the blue t-shirt. And I have two accessories for this collection as well. The first one is a silhouette you guys have seen before, and that is the heavyweight canvas tote bag. It has a gusset in it, so you can fill it with quite a bit of stuff, actually. And I just love these bags. They are such incredible quality. The fabric is super, super thick, and it's just the perfect kind of natural tone. And it has an oversized print on the front of it. And the last piece is a brand new silhouette, and that is the Lone Fox canvas apron. And this is such a perfect perfect crafting apron. So if you are one that gets a little bit messy, whatever it might be in the kitchen while you're crafting, this will take care of all your splatters and spills, which I love. It has two pockets in the front here and it's also extremely affordable, which we also love. It's literally like, oh my gosh, I'm baking a cake. Oh, I spilled the batter on my apron, but don't worry, it's not on my clothes. I am literally crazy. But besides that little acting I just tried to do for you guys, that is the new Heritage Collection. It is available on LoneFox.com right now. I'll leave a link in the description box below. I did a pretty limited run on these pieces because I wasn't sure how anyone was going to react to it. So if you do want something, definitely check it out and get it while it is available. But now that I was able to tell you guys about that, today we are going to be doing five DIY IKEA hacks. Now, traditionally I do three or four projects in a video. However, today I was like, let's amp it up a little bit and do five projects. And you guys, these turned out just incredible. Some of them are a little bit fall themed. However, they are totally alterable to be year round pieces if you don't want to go with like the fall aesthetic, but I do have like probably two projects in here that are a little bit fall themed in terms of colors. But let's jump into today's video. If you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content here every single week on Lone Fox, and let's go ahead and jump into these projects. Anthropology has some of my favorite throw blankets in the world. They're so, so pretty. However, they typically range from about $100 to $200. So I figured let's create one of them using an Ikea Ingrabrata blanket. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It is a cream toned knit blanket and we're gonna be adding, yes, of course, some tassels. I've been doing so much tassels lately, but these ones are a little bit different. I grabbed three different colors of yarn from the craft store and I'm actually just wrapping it around this frame. I just had this on hand, but you can wrap it around really whatever you want. Now, this is what makes the tassels different is that I'm using a thinner yarn for this project, but I'm wrapping it around 
a ton of times. I did 150 wraps on this frame, which sounds like a lot. However, we're just going to create an oversized bulky tassel, which is kind of going to elevate the look of the blanket. So I went ahead and cut off an additional piece of string, slipped it into the middle, and I'm tying it off at the top. This right here is going to be the top of our tassel. So I'm just doing like a triple knot to ensure it's nice and secure on there. And then once that's all knotted up, I'm actually going to go in with an X-Acto knife and very, very carefully cut the end here. I didn't realize how tight 150 strands was going to be on this piece. I couldn't even wiggle it off at all. So I used this and kind of created a satisfying cut seam for you guys where I cut all the threads so that we can have our lovely little tassel. And you're just going to kind of work this slowly. And this is what it's going to look like once you're done with that. I then took another piece of yarn, tied it around the top to create kind of the ball portion on the top of the tassel, and then wrapped it around a couple of times just to kind of create a thicker area if that makes sense. I didn't want just one little strand creating that ball portion. I thought having a couple of strands wrapped around making it a bit thicker would look just nicer overall. So as you can see there it's just a little bit thicker and then I cut off the ending sections as well just to kind of even out the tassel from our initial cut and this is what they look like. They're super chunky and fluffy and I just repeated this process and created three yellow tassels and three orange tassels along with three green tassels. Now from one of these balls of yarn I was able to get four tassels of each color so just keep that in mind if you need more than that you're gonna need more yarn if that makes sense so we're just gonna go ahead and create some more tassels Now that I have those all done, I went ahead and laid my blanket out on the floor and just kind of laid the tassels into the position. I used nine of them on the shorter side of the blanket and I just slipped through a yarn needle and just kind of put it through the knit blanket with the ending piece of our tassel thread and then just tied it in a couple of square knots, which is right over left and then left over right when you tie the knot. I added two to three knots to each tassel just to make sure it was nicely secured into place and that's all you have to do. Just go down the line of tassels, attach them to the blanket, repeat on the other side and you are good to go. This next project is a really, really affordable, incredible hack. I'm using the Beckham Spice Racks, which are only $5 from Ikea. But as you can see, when you build these, the bar in the front is kind of in the middle. It's kind of like in the middle of the top and the bottom. So we're going to recreate the height of the bar. So I'm using some wood filler here to fill in the sections where that bar would initially go. So I'm filling in these holes that are on the sides of the wood. These are the sides of the shelves. So I'm using wood filler, kind of puttying that into the holes to fill them up. And as it dries, you're going to sand it down. You won't even be able to tell there were holes there and I also went ahead and removed the little sections that you would initially put into those holes for the front bar because I'm going to raise the front bar a little bit higher so more of our rattan material can show on the front of the shelf so I'm just sanding down those ends after I used a saw to just take them off super simple and easy and then I'm going to construct the shelf as you initially would using the screws that come in the packaging Once that is all constructed, I'm going to cut down a bit of this woven cane material just to the same exact width and about six inches high. Um, I just gave myself a little bit extra to work with because this was the first shelf I created and six inches seemed to be a perfect amount, but you're going to want the width of the shelf plus about six inches high and you're going to soak the cane for 30 minutes so it's a little bit easier to use. Once that comes out of the water, I'm just going to go ahead and create a flush edge on the left side and then measure it into the center of the shelf to see exactly how long of a piece I need and then also cut it as well and as you can see when I place it in it fits snugly right in the center of the shelf going in with just a bit of sandpaper to sand down that dried wood filler it's just going to smooth it out it looks pretty good to me you can barely tell that it is there and then of course once you have stuff on the shelf you're not going to see it at all so I slipped in my cane material on the bottom here as you can see and I used a staple gun with some pretty short staples to staple this all the way across about a half inch from the front edge because we're going to be flipping this up and then adding our bar as you can see here I'm flipping it up we're then going to go in and add our bar, but we're gonna raise it almost all the way to the top. Before it was in the middle, if you guys remember, we're gonna put it really, really close to the top here. And you can either use wood glue or a nail gun to secure this bar to the top. 
as you can see, you're going to pull the cane up underneath and staple it to the back of the bar here. This is going to be stapled all the way across. And then all you have to do once you staple this on is use an X-Acto knife just to cut away all the excess cane material. Let this dry and it's going to actually cinch up a little bit because of the wet cane and that finishes off your shelf. I absolutely love the look of woven throw pillows. However, they can be pretty pricey. So I found these Kellelgis. I'm so bad at these names, you guys. Little rugs in the rug section at Ikea. And I'm going to go ahead and take these and cut them down into 18 and a half by 18 and a half inch squares. That is the largest size of pillow you can get from these. So I cut them both down to 18 and a half by 18 and a half. And that half inch is going to be our quarter inch seam allowance around the entire pillow. So I went through, pinned it on all three sides, and then sewed along all three sides of this pillow. I could have sworn that I had a zipper on hand for this project, but sadly I did not, so I had to improvise. What I did was I just flipped the pillow insert inside out so we have our right sides out, and then I stuffed inside of it an 18 inch insert. This is one I had from Bed Bath & Beyond, I believe from a long time ago. However, Ikea sells these for just a couple of dollars, so you can slip it right on inside. And then what you're gonna need to do is a little bit tedious. You're just gonna need to invert those edges to make sure that they go on the inside and add some pins all the way across the opening that you still have to basically so off. So I went ahead and I added in all of those pins just to hold it in place and I used a little bit of this thicker thread to kind of match the woven white tone in the pillow already and I just went through and kind of very randomly sewed up this edge slipping it through a strand here and a strand on the opposite side to make sure that they're both attached and I actually really really love the way that this looked in the end. I think it added a very very handmade element to the pillow when you actually see the seam in just a second here. It looks really cute to me so that finishes off your pillow. I honestly had to include one fall item in this video. We're creating a really cute fall doormat. It is the Trampa doormat from Ikea, and I'm going to be using this Witch Please graphic that I just designed on Photoshop really quickly. I will have it linked below for you guys in case you want to create the same one, so you can just print it out on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. And then what I did, because I didn't have cardstock, which I suggest you print it on cardstock, I went ahead and added Mod Podge to the backside and just applied it onto this really thin piece of chipboard, which is basically like a very thin kind of pressed cardboard, and it just made it a little bit sturdier because we are going to be cutting out all of the letters to create a stencil which we're then going to go ahead and paint onto our doormat so using an exacto knife kind of carefully go around each letter and just cut it out this part's pretty self-explanatory i feel like but i just went through and cut all of the letters out using my exacto knife A little tip for you guys when you're cutting out circular objects or like curvy shapes is to move the paper as opposed to the actual uh, cutting utensil, whether it be scissors or an X-Acto knife. So once this is all cut out, make sure to also keep the inserts for the P and the A. I went ahead and flipped this over onto the backside and just trimmed off any excess cardboard. That way I was able to flip it over and make sure it was centered on my doormat. So here it is. I'm centering it on the front of my doormat and using a little bit of painter's tape to go ahead and tape around all of the edges just to make sure that it's nice and taped on there and then I also went ahead and added little pieces of tape behind the little A insert and the P insert as well to make sure those were on there. We're essentially creating a mask for our black paint. So I first thought it would be easiest to go in with a sponge and kind of just paint this on. I don't know why I didn't think of spray paint but then the idea struck me and I was like let's just spray paint this. So I grabbed some matte black spray paint, the one I always used, add a little bit more tape all around the edges and honestly you can just go ahead and spray this right on. You can really reuse this stencil too a couple of times if you wanted to create maybe a couple of these one for your front door your back door whatever it might be it's really really cute pull it off and just remove those little inserts and that finishes off your doormat As 
As many of you guys know, in my IKEA hacks videos, I love doing a larger scale project and I was super inspired by this particular crate, like entryway table, and I thought I would create it with these Naglig IKEA crates. Um, and I'll give original credit and link below the original idea for you guys, but I went ahead and constructed two of these crates as the instructions show. I didn't want to show much of this because you guys probably all know how to assemble IKEA furniture based off the instructions. So once I had both of them assembled, I actually attached them together like this, and I'm going to be using these two and a quarter inch wood screws which were the exact same screws I used to create that bench a while back in the horror movie room so what I did was I actually just drove the screws down at the front side of each left and right side and then flipped it over and added two screws to the back left and right side as well this is going to be attaching your two crates together to make sure that they're nice and sturdy then once you're done with that we're going to be attaching four hairpin legs which I found on Amazon I'll link these below for you guys the exact ones that I ended up using you're going to screw them in and you can totally stain this or paint it if you would like however I thought the natural wood was pretty nice so I left it as is in a manual recording And those guys were my IKEA hacks for you, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. I personally love every single project I created. Honestly, I think the throw blanket might be my favorite. Something about transforming that $25 blanket into what looks like a $150 anthropology piece, it just was really, really satisfying. I love the way that it turned out. I'm really excited to style it in my new living room, which of course the makeover is coming towards the end of the month. And also guys, do not forget the new Heritage Collection of Merge just launched on the site. You can check it out using the link in the description box below and pick yourself up a piece of Lone Fox apparel because why not? It's just really cute. It's fun. I try to make everything super affordable for you guys as well and I think you are going to love it. It's just really cozy, soft, and kind of gives you a little bit of that vintage vibe. But again, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comment section below. I would love to know and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye guys. <laughs>